As salaamu Sayyidi <laughs> Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi Any questions on light and, and anybody have any questions on the light and, and on the shooting stars and they, they go for Jamarat and became a shooting star? <laughs> Uh, see. Well, that was a nice. That was a nice reality. I remember that yeah. from from Mulana Sheikh's talks. Mm. It's only these realities through tariqah, and even now in tariqah is the all but vanishing. The immensity of of, of what Allah opens. That Allah call you for Hajj so that to make you a shooting star, and as soon as you throw the stones at Jamarat. Allah opened the reality of your light to be a shahab, a shahab which hit the shaitans. And then at that point your light is continuously hitting shaitans. And that's why the lights of guidance are so fierce that the souls that become guided and, and sincere they are fierce, Haris alaykum bin mu'mineen hu ra'ufur raheem, they're good to the believer and fierce against shayateen. And that's why shaitan doesn't want these lights upon people and always causes big problems at Jamarat and many deaths and, and difficulties because their souls become activated as a result. One of the realities of why Allah want them at the Jamarat throwing the stones, it opens up and activates their soul to be shooting stars, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Ya Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. May we do some yoga and pranayama breathing experiences beside our daily practices? May we do yoga and pranayama? <laughs> pranayama. <laughs> you know the, 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 the concept here is that no, I don't, we have people coming from all different backgrounds so you know our audience in Pakistan is like, what? What did they just say? <laughs> Yoga? No way. <laughs> People from all sorts of different backgrounds. So again the for us is that uh, this reality is of such a pure nature and such a uh, immense reality that you wouldn't risk contaminating it with anything. So if somebody gave you a, a drink of the most purified water on earth and say, do you mind if I put some juice in here? You change everything in its reality and you contaminate it and it just… you don't want to go in that direction. So at many different levels try to move away from all of those other teachings and keep the teachings to be pure and exactly according to how the tariqah wants. Especially in this ocean where we're opening up people's spirituality. If you open it up with a mixture of, of unknown practices, unknown forces, you can have very bad and dangerous consequences of what opens up and who's coming through and what type of demons and creatures are, are coming based on what mantras, what movements, what intention. So God gives everything based on its intention. When the intention is to reach to the heavens and then God says, you're sitting with a guide so follow the guide. If you put anything into this dish then we have no understanding of, of what's been put into it. Plus you can complicate everything with many different battles. So we were dealing with somebody and they were saying, they're sick, they're sick, they're sick. I said, I don't understand why you're sick, you're wearing the taweez, you're doing the awrads, you're doing the zikrs. Later, a couple years, by the way I'm also doing reiki. I said, oh well thank you for describing that because you never said anything about that. That's completely out of our system, we don't mix these other you know mantras and, and Hindus and, and Buddhists and, and all of these other things that Allah's not pleased with those practices and those beliefs. Don't mix it into the purity and, and the immense reality of Islam in the heart of Prophet So, and was causing tremendous amounts of sicknesses and difficulties. So, you know it's like anything else, you go to a doctor he gives you all these amazing medicines and then you're really, really sick and so what happened? Well I'm taking also some rat poison on the side to take away some sort of bacteria I have. And so my goodness a rat poison made all your hair fall out and you're, you're dying from that. So, you know we don't mix these practices inshaAllah. 
Uh, As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. When I'm doing zikr, I feel strong pressure in my back and my neck, and sometimes my face makes a strange expression. When doing zikr, I feel a pressure in my back, in my neck, and my face makes a strange impression. InshaAllah. Again, like anything else, that once we're doing these energy practices, many people have many different energies that they've been carrying all their life. So the zikr, the association, the meditations are immense cleansings. So as soon as you email us probably the first thing you're going to get is the ta'weezes. You have to fortify your system, fortify the house, you put the ta'weezes all over the windows, the house because you don't want any bad guys coming in and whatever going to come out of you, you want them immediately out. So the ta'weezes are from the world of light in which you're inviting all of Allah wa kullu ma asadiqeen. Allah says, keep the company of pious people. Nasadiqeen can be from Budala, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtad, Akhyar, the awliya can be from the jinn, can be from angels. So all these categories are pious people where Allah says, keep their company. So the ta'weez is from the world of light. They have its own invitation, its own reality and many spiritual beings accompany these realities because of the khidmat. They're also all serving Prophet So Prophet would dispatch, this is your world, go sit in their home please, pray in their home to rid them of difficulties. So many different hikmah and wisdom, so you put the ta'weezes on the home. Then you sanctify yourself and put ta'weezes upon yourself for protection. Anyone who doesn't understand the ta'weez, look at all the tattooed people. Shaitan is doing that the reverse. Shaitan is open, heavens is, is not seen, shaitan's open. So you can see he's ta'weezing all his people, all women are tattooed now from their head to their, their feet. That's a horrible sign. So he's got his marks as a proof, when you see that you should be, oh my gosh I need to get my ta'weez and put my, my spiritual reality upon myself that has its realities, its lights and its blessings. Then as soon as we begin the practices, the wudu and, and sort of fortifying and building ourselves, we have to then be aware that there's going to be energies that try to come out and some energies that try to attack. And that's why then make your connection and the first steps of the muraqabah is that make the connection with the shaykh, visualize the shaykh is like what we just talked about. In this world of light that see the world of light, see the, the shaykh is in front of you and ask that from the world of light I want to make my connection and visualize it, visualize it, visualize it until it's a, f a faith in your heart that, of course the shaykh is there present with me, I'm asking for your fires and your med and your connection that keep your fires upon me, keep your light upon me and keep the relationship in the world of light and build it to be stronger and stronger and stronger until that you keep the companionship of the shaykh at all times and that way you're always in that companionship. And then when you sit and meditate and practice then at least that companionship safeguards you that nothing is entering the room while you're trying to practice and anything inside of you has to be pushed out with their light. So then you feel heated, you feel energies, you feel shaking and they push out every type of negativity that trying to hide within insan inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How important is our handwriting when taking notes? Only I can read my handwriting it seems, is that… That's good, yeah that's okay. How important is your handwriting? Well taking notes is it has to be just enough for you to read it. You know, it doesn't have to be other people to read it but the act of writing is what's important and to, to write it and to bring the reality onto paper so that it manifests as a reality upon my kitab and, and what's written upon the, the holy scribes that are writing upon my reality, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Alaikum dearest shaykh. Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Can we paint the phoenix given on the SMC merch by ourselves to put it up in the house? I feel an urgency to just have it in my house and an itch to paint it, JazakAllah khair. 
Inshallah you can make a stencil of it and, and put it up and, and you, you can, inshaAllah you do it good. Can you make a, a painting yourself of the taweez in your home? Sure, you just have to make a, a stencil of it and put it up inshaAllah and, and paint it and sketch it out inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa um, Can I share what I experienced during muraqabah with my husband? He keeps asking, what is it like? I don't tell him. He's also a your marid, but don't do muraqabah. Can I experience, can I share with my spouse what I experienced through meditation? Because the person is, is curious, sure you can, you, can exp, you can share some general information again according to, to these practices, you don't want to create a, a, a sense of competition and jealousy. So you use a, a little bit of, of, what's the word, filtering that when we try to describe to people, oh how was the meditation, oh it's great I made the connection, I felt light, I felt energy. You filter it not to be boastful one because then you lose whatever you were was opening for you because now it became a source of pride and then shaitan wants to now play with every meditation and oh I was flying here then I went to the carpet and then I went to the heavens they gave me a crown and I still have my crown and <laughs> you have to treat me with a lot of respect and <laughs> it goes out of control. So that's why you try to be very general in the talk, it was great, the energy was good and you can do like this as a sense to increase encourage somebody but not to discourage them and become jealous and then create different problems as well as ruin our own spiritual uh, gift by Allah thinking, okay you're just now trying to brag about these things and mean shaitan put his hand into that amal, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Forgive me for asking but what is the proper way to rid our house of Ouija boards and New Age books? How to rid our house of Ouija boards? Boards? <laughs> well, yeah, that sounds like you had a lot of them there, yeah just try, try to, to get them out right away. <laughs> yeah those are dangerous, those Ouija boards from the stores and, and stuff like that you try to, to get rid of it right away. and. If you can throw it into running water and uh, yeah or, or, or somewhere, I don't know if, if those are big so it's not like you can throw it to people will find you $500 for littering. <laughs> so you try to, to dump them and burn them if you can or, or to dump it into running water as much uh, as quick as possible, inshaAllah. Those, those things are very dangerous. Those things that they sell for children now everywhere. So those are very dangerous Ouija boards and, and you know these sort of satanic devices to call upon entities and beings. You know. mm. okay. Anyone has any questions they can also email the help me at nurmuhammad.com inshaAllah. Click the link now to subscribe.